Hello chess lovers, Sonnen here and in this video I want to share with you a very interesting game played by Tigran Petrosyan. His opponent is Soviet Ukrainian chess player Yosif Pogrebiski and the game was played in 1949 in Tbilisi at URS Championship semi-final. In this game the 20-year-old rising star Petrosyan had white pieces and he opened up with d4 to which Pogrebiski answered with knight f6, c4 g6 Knight f3, bishop g7, g3, black castled kingside, bishop g2, d5. With a transposition of moves, we see Neogrimfeld defense. c takes d5, knight takes d5, white castled kingside, and c5. In years, a knight b6 is very popular in order not to allow this e pawn to step forward with a tempo. Uh, also, knight c6 can be a nice alternative, but in the game we see c5, which allowed this e pawn step forward with a tempo. Knight f6, e5, knight fd7. Well, it's not quite clear why not knight d5. Instead, we see knight fd7, and there comes knight g5. This is a very strong move with which white is putting his knight on an aggressive attacking square and also is freeing the f pawn's path. Uh, for example, at this point, if h6, and you can go for a move like knight f7, and uh, also there is this possibility of playing e6 as well. Uh, all in all, knight g5 is a very strong move. Here black played c takes d4, already making the pawn on e5 defenseless, that's why white played f4. Knight c5, b4, all the time white is harassing this black knight, not allowing to find a safe shelter, and f6, with which black is counter-attacking white knight. At this point, playing knight e6 is better. If knight takes e6, uh, then of course you won't play f takes e6, because you are getting a shattered pawn structure, and also you are voluntarily imprisoning this bishop, that's why you should recapture with the bishop. Of course, in this case, you are weakening the pawn on b7, but this is not a huge problem, because black can play bishop d5. And now accepting the rook sacrifice can be very dangerous for white, because the light squares are very weak and white can face serious problems, that's why it's good to play bishop takes d5. This is a good line, which Petrosian also pointed out afterwards. Uh, but instead, in the game we see f6, and now let's see what's the problem with it. Here, Petrosian played e takes f6, and after e takes f6, went for knight takes h7. As this knight is still hanging on c5, knight takes h7 becomes playable. King takes h7, b takes c5, knight c6, bishop b2, queen c7, this is a cunning move, and of course, you can't win a pawn because in the end of the day, black has this f5 move. And that's why it's a queen c7, white answered with knight d2, bishop e6, knight e4. Petrosian centralized his knight as well, which is now ready both to jump on d6 and also can be very useful on the king side when organizing the attack. After rook a d8 already, as white has developed all his pieces, Petrosian started a bold attack and he played h4. Everything is ready for the final blow and Petrosian goes for it. Queen d7, preparing bishop g4, but this can't help black. h5 is on the board. Bishop g4, h takes g6 check. With his pawn push, white pretty much managed to weaken black's king side. King takes g6, and this time we see f5 check, another very powerful move. Bishop takes f5. Uh, by the way, if queen takes f5, then in this case, white has this beautiful queen b1 move. And now if you move away your queen, then knight g5 check is coming. Uh, the game is over. If here, then knight takes e6. And white is like playing checkers, you know. Uh, in the end of the day, white is getting an extra rook, right? Yes. Uh, that's why to f5 check, black answered with bishop takes f5 and knight d6. This subtle move decides the outcome of the game. Right now the bishop is hanging, we have bishop g4, and there comes bishop e4 check. Knife f5, and simply queen takes g4. Black played king h5, and at this point you can pause the video and try to find Petrosian's next move. Ready? Uh, in here, the iron tig run 
made a queen sacrifice and he played rook f4. The queen is untouchable because checkmate will appear on the board in two moves. And then bishop c1 check and we have a checkmate. Uh, in the game black played f5 but this time Petroisan made an exchange sacrifice. Exchange sacrifice was Petroisan's trademark and we see it once again. F takes g4, queen d2. Where is this mating threat? Black played rook h8 in order to meet queen h2 check with king g5. In this case, as you can see, after queen h2 check king g5, the h4 square is under control. Although with uh, bishop c1 and then queen f2, again, you can announce a checkmate, but Petroisan's move was stronger and in here he just played king g2 and forced the resignation. He's keeping the queen on this diagonal and is threatening rook h1, that's why finally Pogrebiski resigned. It's not like that black made serious mistakes, but very soon found himself in trouble. Of course, all of this speaks loudly about Petrosian's high professionalism. And in the end, a chess puzzle for you may be a slightly difficult one, but still, I'm sure you can solve it. The task is to find the winning line for black. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.